Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I am a huge fan of cars used in old British TV series filmed between the late 1950s and late 1990s. Join me on a journey as we look back on over 40 years of British television and its relationship with the automobile. I made a selection of videos last year talking about a lot of these series and I'm doing it again to make them even better. <laughs> So we started our series um, some weeks ago now, looking at uh, cars used on television by looking at Department S. In fact, we were in this very car when we did it. I apologise if the light's a bit weird. Um, for some reason, this car's more difficult to film in than the other two. Jason King was the sequel to Department S and was filmed between October 1970 and October 1971 um, at Elstree Studios. It was a production by OTC. It was produced by Monty Berman, um, the script editor was Dennis Spooner. However, the music was not by Edwin Ashley, it was by Laurie Johnson, because, um, you know, by the time Jason King came along, um, Laurie Johnson was in need of work, because the Avengers, for which he'd um, been the composer for, I think it was about five years, um, finished production, so he went on to score Jason King. One of the main differences between... Department S and Jason King is that he's on his own. Now, he's not entirely without people who are his allies. So, in a few episodes, um, you see his publisher, who's called Nicola Harvester, played by Monty Berman's wife, Anne Sharp. Um, you know, Monty Berman was obviously keen on cost cutting wherever he could. The other people you might see are Rylands, who is a sort of very kind of how do we say, um, I don't know how to say, a bit of a creepy character who's a uh, little bit smarmy and works for British Intelligence, um, played by Ronald Lacey. His boss is um, Sir Brian, played by Dennis Price. Jason King only works for British Intelligence under a very, very sort of um, kind of uh, reluctant contract, or contract at all, really doesn't exist, but he gets, um, he gets, forced to work for them because they keep threatening to make him pay um, his tax bill because he's exiled to Paris in um, Jason King and rather than Department S he doesn't have his flat in London anymore because he's trying not to pay trying not to pay tax so it's still based in Paris as Department S was but we're on 16 millimeter film now um, the episodes do last for um, an hour as opposed to 25 minutes as then with Adventurer, which obviously made the Adventurer even worse. But there were trying to do episodes for an hour long, um, and we actually have real location filming as in the Protectors and the Adventurer, and indeed the Persuaders. So we see Paris, we see uh, Vienna, mostly in an episode called um, Variations on a Theme, which is really boring actually. You'd think that with some proper location filming in Austria, it would be more interesting. But it just isn't. It's very, very boring. Um, it just goes to prove that actually location filming is not, not uh, everything and people who whinge about stock footage and things in the champions and everything else. Um, they're only right to a certain degree that that will improve the production. We have a number of different cars in, in Jason King um, and, uh, you know, you, there are various manufacturers who clearly paid money to get their cars on screen. And it's surprising which ones actually have done that, actually. There's a few surprises along the way. 
But uh, without further ado, let's uh, look at some of the main cars, or rather the main car of Jason King. When we talk about Jason King, there really only is um, one car that he mainly uses. So we're going to start with a different one. We're going to start with the 1968 Alfa Romeo 1750 GT Veloce used in uh, Nadine, which was the first episode made. Um, that is a beautiful car. It's really nice. You don't see um, some very good shots of it, but nevertheless, it's there for quite a long time. And Jason King himself actually drives it. The main car that's used in most of the episodes, though, is a 1960 Bentley S2 Continental two-door saloon by H.J. Mulliner. It's not the same car used in Department S um, for a start of two-door, and it's silver, but it's a different coach builder. That is, um, I think we're still right-hand drive, but we're supposed to think that we're in Paris a lot of the time, and of course we're not, because this is an ITC series, and... Although they did some location filming in Paris, they still made it so that a lot of the stuff was filmed in London and in Avenger Land, you know, Buckinghamshire, Hertfordshire, places like that. In Nadine and Patrick Mower, uh, yes, the Patrick Mower, um, he drives a Ford Capri. It's a very early one. It's a 69 Capri GT XLR um, in a nice white colour. You see the back of it mainly, there's not... Um, too much else you see of the car, but it's nice to see it nevertheless. It's got Greek plates, but it's actually right-hand drive, so I don't think we're in Greece, but, you know, um, we've got to have a bit of uh, sort of suspense in there, I suppose. In As Easy As ABC, which is one of the best episodes of Jason King, there is a 1970 Volkswagen 411. And in Deadly Line Digits, that's one of the episodes with Ronald Lacey and Dennis Price in it, there is a um, Ford Zodiac Mark IV, it's a 69 car, um, FPU 335H, so clearly that is a Ford press car, and it's not the only press car we see in the Jason King series. There's an episode called uh, Chapter One, The Company I Keep. It has a 1967 upper record C in it. Talking of press cars, um, in the episode It's Too Bad About Auntie, there's a 1969 Porsche 911E, CLB 911H, clearly a Porsche press car. Um, they must have thought it's a very glamorous series, and therefore they could have their glamorous cars in it. In The Constance Missile, there's a 1970 Porsche 914 stroke six. And also in Chapter 1, The Company I Keep, um, there is a 1972 Porsche 911T. That must be a 72 model as opposed to the year because they finished filming, I think, Autumn 70, uh, 71. So that would be just a 72 model. I do apologize for Dot that's coming on. I don't know what's going on about that. That's probably to do with the light in this car. Um, let's carry on, though. There are two Toyota Corolla Coupes used in... Jason King. There is a right-hand drive and a left-hand drive one. The right-hand drive one turns up in episodes like An Author in Search of Two Characters, when it's driven by Liz Fraser. I think many of you will know who Liz Fraser is. I think she's still alive, actually. Can't remember now. Um, and then there's a left-hand drive one used in an episode called All That Glisters Part 2. ITC two-part episodes are generally terrible. Um, All the Glisters parts one and two is no exception. It really doesn't need two parts in it. Although I think the worst ITC two-part episode is probably WAM parts one and two, which is from Protectors. Another Jason King 
press fleet car is a 1971 Vauxhall Viva SL. It's an HC type Victor, similar one to, to one of my parents had in the mid 70s. Um, I don't know what the plate is on that. Because we're looking at 16 millimeter film, often it's very unclear as to what is um, what is going on in some shots, and this is no exception. That Viva though appears in loads of different episodes. Um, just see it as far away as sort of Hong Kong and Turkey and things. In fact, the, the Zodiac I mentioned earlier, that's loads of episodes as well. In the Red Red Rose Forever, um, there's a 1970 Vauxhall VX490. Um, in That Isn't Me, It's Someone Else, which is one of the last episodes of Jason King. There is a 1966 Ford Galaxy 500 that also appeared in Department S and Randall Hawk at the Sea, because I think you would have seen that if you've seen those episodes. In the episode Toki, we see a substitute for the white Jaguar footage. It's one of the last times the white Jaguar footage is used by ITC, actually. Um, they make you believe it's a 1964 S-Type that goes off the cliff. However, we all know better than that, and it's actually a Mark I um, that they threw off the cliff back in the days of the Baron, which would have been six years earlier. Um in a thin band of there, there's another Citroen Ami. They quite likely are putting Citroens in ITC series around this time, I must say. Um, that's, yes, yeah, so a thin band of there. It's an Ami Wheat. And we'll get on now to the final section of the cars of Jason King. There's actually not that many, really. So I haven't covered all the cars they use in Jason King, but I've covered pretty much all the ones that I find interesting anyway. Um, in Buried in the Cold, Cold Ground, there's a 1966 Mercedes 250S. Um, in The Kiss for Beautiful Killer, there's a 1968 Citroen ID-19. Um, that contrasts with a 1971 Citroen DS21 Palace that's used in Flamingos Only Fly on Tuesdays. They are two different cars and they're different colours. In um, A Red Rose Forever, there's actually a stock shot from the Baron in it, and that stock shot contains a Ford Taurus 17M. I think that shot is also used in the protectors, but I can't remember right now. Uh, the final car I mention, um, also from Flamingos Only Fly on Tuesdays, is a 1971 Maserati Ghibli. It's only used in a couple of shots, and I don't know why they even had that in there. It doesn't particularly need to be there, but I'm glad that it is. So there we go, uh, the cars of Jason King. Now, is Jason King worth watching these days? Well, if you're a fan of Department S and a fan of um, Peter Wingard in particular, then you'll really like it. He gets to go on his own doing stuff. I personally miss the other two in the tree from Department S. The fact it's made on 16mm film and the location filming doesn't, doesn't particularly add too much more to the series, just hamper it somewhat, but... It's a lot better series than I remember it from when I watched it the first time. My lady wife and I watched it recently and she quite enjoyed it. Um, the box set is available from um, Network, I believe, and um, it's well worth having a look, particularly if you can find it for um, a low price. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below um i've also got a facebook page facebook.com forward slash lloyd Burke consulting and i'm also on instagram if you want to look me up there um, and next time we'll be looking at yet another nostalgic television series